All right, in this video, we're going to use completing the square to solve our quadratic. And we're going to talk our way through these problems to make sense of what's happening. So let's say we have x squared plus 2x, right? Um, plus, or well, let's say minus 3. And this equals 0. Now you're told to factor using the method of completing the square. Well, as we talked about in other videos, to complete the square, right, we have to use the idea of a perfect square and a quadratic. We talked about this briefly and, and said that x plus a squared, if you square something, right, you get a perfect square, and we would get x squared plus 2ax plus a squared. Right? This is our this is our formula. This is what we talked about. We can apply that here. Because here, right, we have a 2. And that's representing 2a. So to, to rewrite this as a, a perfect square and complete the square, first thing I'm going to do is move this 3 out of here. I'm going to add it to both sides. Right, I'm going to balance the equation. So negative 3 plus 3, that's 0. 0 plus 3 is 3. And we get x squared plus 2x right, equals 3. And I'm going to leave some blank sp space in here to complete the square. And the reason I did this is because now I have, right, the first part of what could be a perfect square and a quadratic. This 3 was getting in the way, so I moved it out of there. That's my, my goal right here. So now what? Well, we just said that this 2 represents the 2a, or in this case, this part of the equation. Whatever coefficient you have or number you have by the x, that'll equal this part of the equation. So in this case, 2 equals 2a. So we want to solve for a because we have to complete the square and write down a squared. So how do we do that? Well, 2 times a equals 2. So a has to equal 1, right? Because 1 times 2 is 2. All right, so then a squared is just 1 squared or, then, or just 1. And that's 1. So now we can complete the square. All we have to do in this case is add, right, 1 because we added in an a squared. Now to balance out the equation, we have to also add 1 to this side, because whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So now 3 plus 1 is 4, and on the left side of the equation, we get x squared plus 2x plus 1. And the reason we went through all this trouble is because now this can be easily factored. right? This is a square. So if we factor this, we get x plus 1 squared and that will equal 4. How did I do that? Well, look at our formula over here from before. x plus a number squared will give you a quadratic in this format. So that means that if the last term is a squared, and here we need an a, oops, all you need to do to find that a is take the square root of this number right here, of a squared. And the square root of a squared is just 1 anyway, so this will work. So now, the goal is to solve for x. If x plus 1 squared equals 4, then I could say that the square root of x plus 1 squared, right, due to both sides, equals the square root of 4. But the key here is to say the plus or minus square root of 4, because you want to look at both cases. right? This is a quadratic, so most likely it has two root, or it could have two roots. So the square root of x plus 1 squared is just x plus 1. That goes back to the idea of take the square root of anything right? squared, like the square root of 4 squared, well, 4 squared is 16, the square root of that is just 4. right? Here is the square root of x plus 1 squared, so it'll equal x plus 1. So x plus 1 equals positive or negative 4. So this can go two ways when we solve for x. If we subtract 1 from both sides, we can get x equals positive or negative 4 minus 1. So in one case, we get 4 minus 1, which is 3. But also, right, we can get negative 4 minus 1, which is negative 5. So for this equation, we have two answers. x could be equal to negative 5, or it could be equal to 3. You can go either way. And you could try that by plugging into the equation, right? Negative 5 squared is 25 plus negative 10, right? 
negative 10 plus 25 is negative 15. So now what do we do? Well, the square root of x plus 1 squared, right, you're squaring the square root. That just gives us x plus 1. They're inverse operations. They undo each other. And on the right side of the equation, we have a plus or minus 2, because negative 2 squared is, is 4, and so is positive 2. So solving for x, we get x equals plus or minus 2 minus 1. We're just subtracting 1 from both sides. So two cases. In the first we can have 2 minus 1, right, positive 2 minus 1, which is 1, or we could have negative 2 minus 1, which is negative 3. So x could equal either value, and you could test that out by plugging it in here, right? In the first case, x is 1, so 1 plus 2 is 3, minus 3 is 0. Or with negative 3, that's 9, negative 3 squared is 9, plus negative 6, right, negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, is 3. Minus 3 is 0. So we were able to find that solution by completing the square. Let's try one more. What if we had um, something like p squared minus, I don't know, 8p plus 21? And that equaled something, let's say 6. Okay, what do we do? Well, we want to complete the square, right? So the first step for me is always to subtract out whatever constant I have. And then I get p squared minus 8p equals 6 minus 21, which is negative 15. Now I can complete the square by analyzing this term. Now again, I'm going to say that negative 8 equals 2a. That's the big difference here. Right? Remember, our square looks like x squared plus 2ax plus a squared. So 2a is right here, the coefficient of x, and that's our coefficient. So I want to solve, what's a? Well, a equals negative 8 divided by 2, which is negative 4. So a is negative 4. What's a squared? Well, it's negative 4 squared. And that's negative 4 times negative 4, which is just positive 16. So now we have all the pieces in place. To complete the square, I'm going to rewrite this as p squared minus 8p plus 16. And now to keep everything balanced, I'm going to add 16 to the right side. So we have negative 15 plus 16. Add up these two to get 1. Now this will factor nicely on the left-hand side to x minus 4 squared. And I know that because I need to get this minus sign in here. And if I expand this, right, x minus 4 times x minus 4, x times x is x squared, x times minus 4 is minus 4x, another minus 4x, and then positive 16. So I knew that this is the term that will work to get us the perfect square or completed square with a negative sign. If I just use x plus 4, how would I get this negative sign? I wouldn't be able to do it. So I knew I needed to have x minus 4. Now I want to solve for x. So take the square root of both sides. Right On the right side, we want to look at both the positive and negative square roots. So same as before, uh, the square root of x minus 4 squared is just going to be x minus 4. 
that's going to equal positive or negative 1, because the square root of 1 is either positive or negative 1. So now when we solve, we get x equals positive or minus 1 plus 4. So in the first case, it could be negative 1 plus 4. And negative 1 plus 4, I'll write it up here, is 3. In the other case, it could be 1 plus 4, which is 5. So we could have 3 or 5 as an answer for x. And if you plug them in here, you'll see that they do both work. Alright, so I hope this helped.